What is going on guys, in this video we're we'll doing a review of the Samsung Galaxy S6. So starting straight off with the dimensions, it's 143.4 by 70.5 by 6.8 millimeters and is weighing in at a pretty light 138 grams. One thing to note is that you'll notice that the side bezels of the screen are very small. So it's actually a little bit smaller than the Galaxy S5 from last year but the screen size is still the same. One thing is for certain though that this is by far the best looking Galaxy S device ever made. you notice that the back is really hard to see the Samsung logo but I'm actually waving my hand and you can actually see it reflecting because the back is actually Corning Gorilla Glass 4. But you notice at the very bottom of the device, it looks exactly the same as the iPhone 6. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but you can't deny that it looks just like it. Now this attractive new design comes at a huge cost though. On the right I have the Galaxy S5 from last year, which isn't as attractive as the S6, but it's still a pretty decent to look at device. And here's a list of things that are actually worse with the S6, with the downgrade that Samsung did. The first is that it's very slippery on the back, I'll be demonstrating that just shortly. The S5 is dust and water resistant, whereas the S6 isn't. The S5 has a micro USB 3.0 port, the S6 has 2.0. The S5 has a micro SD card slot, the S6 doesn't. And of course, the S5 has an accessible battery, whereas the S6 isn't. It's a unibody design. So to demonstrate how slippery the S6 is, I've actually placed the S5 at a disadvantaged position. It's at a much higher, steeper angle. You'll notice that the S6 is just sliding away, whereas the S5, despite being on a steeper angle, isn't moving at all. I've actually had the phone drop a couple times like this. Now going over the physical design and connections, on the bottom right you have the speakers. Just next to it, that little hole is the first microphone. Then you have the micro USB 2.0 port and the 3.5mm jack. On the left you have the volume rocker buttons. And on the top you have the IR blaster at the middle. And just next to it is the secondary microphone. Now switching over to the right, as I mentioned, you can't open this device. Now the SIM card can only be accessed by a pin that comes out of the box with the device. And just above that you have the power button. Now switching over to the back side, we have that 16 megapixel camera. And as you would expect from a Galaxy S device, the camera is absolutely phenomenal. What you're seeing is 4K footage being recorded, compressed down to 1080p to match the rest of the footage of this YouTube video. And of course, color reproduction is fantastic, and not only that, it's sharp. This is one of the best cameras you can find on a smartphone on the market. Again, this shouldn't come as a surprise considering it's from Samsung. Even when it comes to just taking pictures, you're getting some great color pop. Now, of course, I am in a grocery store and I found that, you know, the produce section would be the best way to demonstrate just what kind of color representation I can get. It does a fantastic job. Now, when it comes to pictures at night, well, this is a very dark street. It performs pretty poorly. You have a lot of noise. And the same can be said about video footage in a low lighting situation. But again, it is a smartphone, so don't expect the sensor size because it is small to perform great, like any other smartphone. And continuing with the back, there's a heart rate sensor in the back of this device, just under the flash. And I have to say that it has been vastly improved over last year's model and over that of the Galaxy Note 4. So this time I switched over to the front facing 5 megapixel camera and this particular clip actually is recorded in 1440p which is compressed down to 1080p because yes the front facing camera can record in 1440p uh, I guess Samsung did that to match the resolution of the screen because it's 1440p or 2k whatever you want to call it uh, Generally though front facing cameras aren't a major deal I mean I usually use for selfies but in terms of video and picture quality I mean I have to admit it's still one of the best on the market 5 megapixel count isn't huge, but for a front facing camera, I would say that this is one of the best you can get right now. So what you guys are seeing right now is the infamous dual capture mode, which I believe Samsung invented. If not, they were the ones that made it very popular. And although other phone manufacturers try to do this, it doesn't work as well on a Galaxy device, and the Galaxy S6 does it the best. So I can do some things like tapping on a small window, it'll switch, I can tap back, and you'll notice that the border is like this angelic theme. I'm feeling quite angelic for some reason today, uh, but you can actually switch it to like a stamp, a basic window border. You have different borders to choose from. Another thing is that you can actually tap, hold and drag it across the screen. And during video recording, which other phones can't really do, you can resize the window. Samsung does dual recording the best still, you can't deny that. Keep in mind that you can't record in 4K while doing this. It is capped at 1080p, but that's expected because there's a lot of pressure being put on the processor during this recording. So Samsung has upgraded the camera app significantly, but I have to mention that this phone is the fastest to open up a camera app that I have ever used. So if you have this option activated where you can double tap the home button in the camera app, it'll open up the camera app instantly. There, just like that. That is blazingly fast and very, very impressive. 
Generally though, the interface is still somewhat similar to that of the Galaxy S5 and the Note 4, but Samsung has actually removed a lot of the options that pop up. As you'll notice now, there's just the generic uh, quality settings that you have. And if you press the mode button, you actually have more options available. As you can see, you have auto mode. Pro mode is more of a manual configuration. Selective focus is like a DSLR background, the panorama, slow motion, fast motion, and you also have the ability to download more from the Samsung store. And of course, these options that you're seeing, like say the rear camera selfie, are actually some stuff that came with the Galaxy S3, but Samsung decided to make it optional downloads. Virtual shots allow you to take like a 360 panorama of an object. Quite honestly, it's absolutely pointless as you're better off recording a video and walking in a circle around that particular subject. As you're noticing now, this is the front facing camera. And yes, I've activated the beautify face, which allows you to slide the cursor and remove pimples. But if you go too high up, it'll make your face look somewhat artificial. There are some other options available that were included with the Note 4, like wide selfie. This actually allows you, if you see on the top left corner of the box, to make like a panorama group selfie. Yeah, you can do that. That's actually pretty awesome. Even though I'm not a fan of selfies, I have to say that's pretty impressive. Now when it comes to taking a selfie, it can be kind of annoying and difficult, but you notice I'm actually just taking selfies without touching the screen. That's because simply touching the heart rate sensor at the back will automatically take the selfie for you. Continuing with the hardware at the front of the device, the LED notification light is rather large and bright. Not only that, it pulses at an interval of roughly 5 seconds. And finally, onto the discussion of this amazing screen. What we have here is a 5.1 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1440 by 2560 with approximately 577 ppi. You notice that the side bezels are actually really slim. So not only is this device smaller than the Galaxy S5 from last year, it actually feels smaller on the hand because physically it is. I actually think the screen is smaller, but it's not. Samsung was actually able to fit the same screen size and make the body smaller. And only that, the screen is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 4. And this is one of the best screens you can get on a smartphone easily. It's fantastic. You also have the ability to adjust color options because they are in the system settings menu. And viewing angles are pretty respectable. And not only that, it can get fairly bright. Oddly enough, the speaker is actually positioned on the bottom of the device. And if you cover up even just a little bit, it will cover up all the sound. So let me just give you a quick demonstration. It doesn't seem to struggle at all. I've never experienced any phone able to keep up with me this well. So if you plan to watch videos or play video games and you're holding it like this, you'll have to be a little bit careful not to cover up the speaker. So what I'm going to do at this point is my usual speaker volume test. What I have done is place the camera about 20 feet away from the smartphone. It won't look like it due to the cropping factor, but it is. And not only that, I placed the smartphone on max volume and I'm playing a YouTube video from my YouTube channel. So let's take a listen and switch over to the camera microphone. Chip, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, which supports 802.11, A, B, G, N, and AC. As you can see, it can get fairly loud. So despite the speaker being on a weird position on the bottom of the device, which can be a little bit annoying if you cover it up, Samsung actually makes up for this by having the speaker tremendously loud. For a single speaker, it is very, very impressive. No matter which version of the Galaxy S6 you get, it always comes with 3 gigs of RAM inside. Not only that, it is available in three different options of 32, 64, or 128 gigs of internal storage options. However, none of them unfortunately have a micro SD card slot. Inside is an Exynos 7420 octa core processor. A quad core is 1.5 gigahertz, and the other quad core is at 2.1 gigahertz. Now, in terms of just general snappiness, it's great, but the weird thing is, that despite having a whopping 3 gigs of RAM, you'll notice that I can't open too many apps at the same time. Now it's not a major deal because who needs that many apps available right there and then at the same time, but it's just something interesting I had to note to you guys. Now switching between apps and notice isn't the fastest, the HTC One X well is still the top king. This is pretty average compared to what you would say is available on the market. It's nothing terrible, nothing special, it's okay. But one thing you can't deny is that when it comes to multitasking, Samsung is still the top dog, especially when it comes to the multi-window function. Some manufacturers are starting to copy this function and try to utilize it, but it will never work as good as a Galaxy S device. Now when it comes to gaming, it performs awesome. What we have inside is a Mali T760 MP8 GPU. Couple that with the Exynos processor, which already is snappy on its own, you have some amazing gaming performance. Playing the top graphic Android games is amazing on this device. It doesn't stutter or doesn't have any frame rate droppage at all. I expect it to last a few good years in terms of playing the top graphic Android games. Also keep in mind is that when playing games for an extensive amount of period, 
the device gets warm but not hot, so it's pretty average in terms of the temperature. The battery is a 2550 milliamp battery, and in terms of usage in about a day and 4 hours, I was able to get a fair amount of usage. One thing that's bizarre is I'm not seeing my call talk time in the battery usage stats, but during this time I actually used the call talk time for about a half an hour. And of course I had the screen on for 2 hours and 44 minutes and of that time I had YouTube running for about half an hour. And YouTube is a massive battery hog. So the battery performs pretty decent especially considering it has to power a 1440p screen. And on top of that you have two battery saving modes. Of course I will reduce the performance of the phone itself but you're getting a great battery performance out of it. Not only that, out of the box you will get this quick recharging adapter, so you can recharge about 50% of the battery in 35 minutes. Switching gears over to wireless technologies, what we have here is GPS, Wi-Fi for support of 802.11, A, B, G, N, and AC, LTE, Bluetooth, NFC, DLNA, a USB port as mentioned, and of course the heart rate sensor at the back. You also have an IR blaster which I'm demonstrating for you guys right now, which basically means if your device is compatible with your home theater devices to be specific, you can actually use the Galaxy S6 as a universal remote control for your various home theater devices. Not only that, you also have a download booster which allows you to combine your LTE and Wi-Fi speeds together to download files that are over 30 megabytes in size. And yes, lastly, you'll also have Miracast which means you can wirelessly display whatever is being shown on your Galaxy S6 to a device that supports Miracast technology. Out of the box, the device comes with Android 5.0 Lollipop, and what Samsung has actually said that they cleaned up a lot of the TouchWiz features, and I have to say this is true. My biggest gripe was the system settings menu and the TouchWiz interface was always messy, and finally Samsung has fixed it. It's actually easy to navigate, everything is actually organized pretty well. Of course, you have the quick settings options available, in which you can have 9 shortcuts at the top, and even though the system settings menu looks large, it's actually pretty easy to navigate. And you have that lollipop search function, which Samsung actually released before lollipop on the Galaxy S5. Furthermore, they've actually improved the fingerprint scanner. You no longer have to swipe, you can just simply press your fingerprint on the home button and it'll unlock the device immediately. Samsung has also included the ability to download some themes and there are available more from the Samsung store, but I'm just going to use this one as for demonstration purposes, I find it pretty funny. But it's not just a simple icon pack that you're going to be downloading, it actually changes your notification drawer, it changes your system settings menu color, it changes a whole bunch of things, like you're actually able to download proper themes for your Galaxy S6 device without having to load a custom ROM. Now those features that I showed were just the tip of the iceberg, you can find more in the tips and tricks video, the link is in the video description. But there are some legit problems with this interface. The first of course is that certain people cannot organize their apps in alphabetical order, you'll notice that mine is a mess. And if even if I tap the edit button, there's no option to change in alphabetical order. All I can do is just hold and drag and rearrange them. Apparently, people have claimed on the internet that you have to receive a software update to get the ability to rearrange in alphabetical order, but people like myself don't have that available yet. The other issue is like the Galaxy S5 from last year, you can't remove S Finder, Quick Connect, and the brightness control levels from your notification bar. It's really annoying and it takes up a lot of space. And one of the most annoying things, if you turn off your mobile data, you'll always get this pop-up telling you that, hey, you turn off your mobile data. We know it. We know what it does. We don't need your notification telling us that. Now, Samsung kind of makes up for this by including something called Smart Switch, allows you to turn on mobile data and Wi-Fi at the same time. And if you leave a Wi-Fi connection, it'll automatically switch to LTE. And now, some other devices have this feature, but the Galaxy S6 uses it the best. However, for people on limited mobile data plans, this is actually not an excuse because they'll have to turn off the mobile data and get that pop-up warning every time. One last thing I want to show you guys is the gallery options. I figured I'd throw this in here while I have the chance still because there are a lot of editing functions available. You might not ever need to download a third-party app. You see, within every option is more options and more options to edit and fine-tune your pictures. And yes, after all those features and all the hype, this is still a phone. So I have to mention that the call quality is decent, it's nothing fantastic, it's okay, it'll do its job just fine. So understandably the Galaxy S6 is one of the most popular devices of the year. Now some can argue that it looks just like, well, an iPhone 6. And I'm a huge Samsung and Android fan and I have to admit that's true. There are some legit problems. The first of course is if you're like me and you haven't received an update, you can't organize your apps in alphabetical order. Although an update does fix that, I haven't received it yet and many people on the internet and forums have to agree as well. 
Of course you can download third party launcher apps, but that's still no excuse from Samsung, that's a ridiculous mistake. Then of course the notification drawer, you can't remove S Finder Quick Connect and the brightness control level, I don't understand why it has to take up permanent space. And lastly, the most annoying thing about the software design is of course that when you turn off mobile data, you'll always get this pop up saying that hey, you turn off mobile data, you have no internet connection. I know when I turn off mobile data, I already know that I have no internet connection. Then of course there's the argument that the physical design is actually a downgrade in many ways from the Galaxy S5 from last year. So despite people complaining that they want a nicer looking device, it actually works against them. But with all these problems and cons, you have to admit that the pros greatly outweigh the cons. That's why I still got a high score, but not as high as it could have been. You see, it has one of the best screens on the market. And despite it having 1440p screen, there's a lot of pixels to power, the battery still works great, as with many Samsung devices. And of course, it is a Samsung device, and the camera will be awesome. And it is. It, it's just what you would expect from Samsung. But most importantly, what Samsung really emphasized, a lot of people don't know unless you're a nerd like myself, is that they cleaned up the software. They finally listened to people and said, we're gonna clean up TouchWiz, and they did. Generally though, if you have the Galaxy S5, you're not really missing out on anything with the Galaxy S6 or the 6 Edge, which is actually just a gimmicky device you have to pay 100 bucks more for, minimum. Generally, if you're looking for a new device, the Galaxy S6 might be worth checking out. So if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter links, a whole bunch of other video links regarding the Galaxy S6, like a gaming demo video, camera sample video, a whole bunch of other things in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.